It's Brandon Cruz Daily Fantasy Podcast, where I go and look at low-owned plays and strategies specifically designed for GPPs. This is a show for people who are already informed on daily fantasy sports and how these contests operate. If you have any questions related to NASCAR, that isn't a stupid question, feel free to shoot it my way at Brandon Cruz DFS on Twitter. Most importantly, take everything you hear with a grain of salt and use your best judgment when making entries. Additionally, if you have a gambling addiction, that's not my problem. Check your sensitive feelings at the door. Let's get right into the Truck Series race at Michigan. First off... Man, I'm so sad. I was waiting all day for DraftKings to release the prices, release the contest, so I can make this. Then we got a little baby contest. Right? Oh, man, it's so sad. About the only one worth playing in that I see is the $33, 212-person tournament. Maybe the single block 12. I was looking at the, uh, the Rainbow Warrior, but... That's 49 guys. I mean, that's not bad. I might do that one, too. I got to figure it out. I'm disappointed. I figured I'd be spending more. I honestly thought, I, I mean, this is good. I, I'm not spending nearly as much money as I thought I would be on a truck series race. But um, I don't know. I guess I'll move that money over to either the cup series. Because even the Xfinity contests are kind of small this week. Probably because all the sports are back and everything. But, oh, well, we'll, we'll, we'll survive. So let's look at the truck series race. As always, go to race for the prize, race for the number four, the prize.com to get the fancy NASCAR spreadsheet that I use and that you need to be using as well. It has been a godsend to me. It helps me make my lineups, helps me look at all the stats all in one place. You guys need to go check it out. And let's get right into this here. If you and, and also, if Pierce has put out tons of content this weekend, I think he's put out five or six podcasts at the time of me recording this one. Some on the Cup Series race, some on the Truck Series. I know one on the Truck Series, one on Road America, and then he's really breaking down the Cup Series race. So if you guys need some info, go check that out. I don't know what you're doing. Like, it's it's loaded over there. Uh, but let's go check out the Truck Series race. I mean, probably be the best race of the weekend. Leader's not going to pull away. Everybody's going to be close. It should be wild for DFS. A lot of tilt will probably be all over Twitter. Um, and... You know, I really don't think I'm going to focus too much on talk. I really don't think I'm going to do that. I'm going to see what other people think and do and, and where other people are looking at. Um, but I have the guys that I like, and I'm going to freaking go there. So let's go and let's go check out um, where I think most people are going to go. I guess just breaking down the grid, really. Um, let's see, Chandler Smith. Look, I don't think there's going to be a real leader in this race. I think it's going to flip-flop between people. Um, with, I mean, normally I wouldn't say that for a Michigan race, but we've had no qualifying, no practice. It's the first time these guys are going to fill the car. And I know we say that every week, but look, this is a racetrack where there could be some big wrecks. I think we're going to have a big wreck in this race, some way or another. When I mean big, maybe about five or six cars or something. That's huge for DFS. It usually takes out... You know, a, a chalk play at, at, at best, too, at worst. Um, so that's how I think it's going to go. I don't like Chandler Smith a whole lot. I like Brent Moffitt. Chris Neckis has a chance to do well. Crafton, no. Austin Hill, he's the best car out on the track. I like him. I like Enfinger. Dane Smith, I don't like. I don't trust him. I don't like the play. That's just me. I don't like Sheldon Creed. Derek Krauss is still too cheap. I don't know what is going on with DraftKings and Krauss still being under eighty-five, or still being under eight thousand. I don't get it. I'm confused. I like Ben Rhodes, Raphael Lassard. Situation where I want to play him again. Don't like Gravel. Don't like Sauter. Don't like Akram. Don't like Burton. Don't like Tanner Gray. Pool. Pool. Okay, this is weird. So Poole is now starting 17th. He's $7,000. I've been trying to actively avoid him because people have been playing him. But maybe starting 17th, the ownership isn't there. I don't really know yet. And this is before I've made lineups. I'm recording this after um, salaries were released. But I really haven't tinkered a whole lot. But I'm, I'm using my best judgment here. Um, Todd Gillen's too expensive there. Yeah, he's, he's too expensive there. I'd much rather go Ryan Truex. Stuart Friesen at $9,100. That's a bit aggressive. He should be like 89 somewhere around there. He has upside, but he struggled so much this year. 
Clay Greenfield and Jesus Jeff Hammond at $7,100, but I don't think that works. Isia Wuji, he's going to wreck the field. I promise you that he, it, if someone's going to do something stupid, it's going to be Jesse Wuji. And no way I'm playing him. Jordan Anderson, no. Ogilment, no. Cody, maybe. Austin Wayne Self, too cheap, maybe. Corey Roper, probably not. Probably too expensive. I gotta check if Josh Ryum has a sponsorship. Tyler Hill, $4,700. Baby, let's go. Lock that baby in. Um, what do they do? I'm trying to think of a game show. Is it Deal or No Deal where they close that glass box when you don't want to get the money? That's what I would do with Tyler Hill, but the opposite. I'd love Tyler Hill starting 30th, $4,900. Probably going to be a staple in my lineups, I imagine. Or my line. I only play one lineup now anyway. It doesn't matter. I'd, I'll probably play Tyler Hill um, as a huge salary relief. And then just have fun going everybody going everywhere else. So because of that, I don't like Boyd. Veens is interesting as well. Starting 32nd, $300 cheaper. I trust Tyler Hill, though. Uh, I would trust Tyler Hill to finish 20th. To finish 21st, 22nd, 23rd, I think that's his end game, or his 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 projection rather. Whereas Tim Veens should maybe finish 30th, 29th, 28th, or he might do something stupid and wreck the field. Jennifer Joe Cobb, same story here. It's gonna be, it's gonna be the Tyler Hill, Tim Veens, and Jennifer Joe Cobb in this race for me personally. But choosing what to do, I think that's how you gotta look at it. I think you're gonna need one of these three racers because I imagine. Most people are going to either want Chandler Smith or not either. They're going to want Chandler Smith, Moffitt, Eckes, Hill, Infinger, Smith, uh, probably Krauss, and Rhodes. So, so let's say in the people starting inside the top 10, three of those are in each lineup, or two at least, two at bare minimum. Uh, probably Moffitt, Hill. I imagine that's where it goes. People are going to have to punt somewhere. Uh, Tyler Hill would probably be my punt option there because I just trust him more than uh, John Hernimacek, eleven thousand one hundred dollars. No way, Jose Parker Klugman. No way, Jose. As I said, uh, I'm with the talk with Jason. Or I don't think I said in the podcast, but I think I said it off when we were done talking or before. Klugman's a trap. I don't like Klugman at all. People are gonna go to him. I don't like it. Don't like it at all. Norm Benning too expensive. Ray Cicerelli too expensive. Dawson Cram, too expensive. Ray Hutchins, no, 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 no. It's <laughs> it's Tyler Hill, Tim Veens, Jennifer Joe Cobb. One of these three drivers will be optimal. I got a feeling. If I had to rank these three, it's probably Tyler Hill, Jennifer Joe Cobb, Tim Veens. Uh, but the salary relief they offer here. Let me look at DraftKings. Let me, let me just put... I want to see how people are going to create lineups. So... This is a bit different for me, but I'm trying to get I'm trying to get this video out specifically before the end of the night, so it has time to survive on YouTube before it is destroyed and never viewed again. So let's say, for example, well, I am a casual fan. I like Brett Moffitt, ninety-seven hundred dollars. I like who else do I like? Who else? Who am I playing? You know, Austin Hill. You know, he's a good driver. Uh, let's say, let's say, well, I went to poll. Sitter. So we got Brett Moffat, Austin Hill, Chandler Smith in the lineup. That's six thousand nine hundred dollars remaining for the rest of the three people in your lineup. Where are you gonna go? You're probably gonna go down. Most people, when they see oh six thousand nine hundred dollars, well, let me see who I can get there. First off, they see six thousand nine hundred dollars and laugh because they're because they're seven. And then and then and then you're looking at people who are around that price range. So you see Brennan Poole, Ryan Truex, Ryan Majeski, David Grayley. Um, Corey Roper, you're choosing around these guys, so you're like, oh, well, yeah, yeah, you know Ryan Truex. I like Ryan Truex. You know Ty Majeski, you know a uh, racer. You know six to seven hundred dollars, and you got seven hundred dollars left, and you go to Jordan Anderson or Pool or whatever. But okay, so so I just broke down how I how I assume a, a typical lineup will be made. Um, so what what does it open up if you go all the way down to let's say in my example Tyler Hill. Uh, let's say you have Tyler Hill and Austin Hill, uh, that's eighty-seven hundred dollars left. That's you're you're able to make far more lineups, way more, not safer, 
but uh, I mean, you just have a higher ceiling. No, I, I haven't, like I said, I haven't ran these in my optimizer yet. I, I haven't even really made projections yet, um, in detail. But I assume that's what, that's the route I'd rather go. If you want to go even cheaper, which I might, God, I might do Tim Veens. Tim Veens punt. Oh man, that's attractive. That's gonna be close. I'm really gonna have to. I'll spend the whole night arguing whether I want to go Tyler Hill or Tim Beans or Jennifer Joe Cobb. But I think it, I, I think it's a one point. I think it's a one punt type of race. Um, because like all the guys that I really like are, are priced affordably. Brett Moffitt, uh, Austin Hill, Eckes, Lassard. Because I'm just the Lassard guy at this point. Uh, ben Rhodes. I mean, even Zane Smith. I'm not crazy on him, but I can throw him. Tyler Ankrum, seven or eighty-seven hundred dollars. Actually, Tyler Ankrum is underpriced. If anything, he should be nine thousand, maybe ninety-two. Even Jeb Burton. That's. I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can go, and and the way to open that pathway up is probably a punt. That's what I'm guessing. Even Ryan Truex at $6,800. I mean, he's in play. I mean, this is the way I think you have to go about it. I don't think if if you go, I think if you go balanced here, if you're hurting yourself tremendously, especially if this race turns into a wreck fest, not a wreck fest, but if people struggle, that means the punt is probably going to work because they're going to easily gain at least seven positions. For example, who's throwing the photos back? Jennifer Joe Cobb. Let's say if people wreck, she finishes 27th or whatever. That's I'd have to check and see. Um, but yeah, I mean these races that tend to be you know wilder or crazier in practice. I think that's where punts really come into play. I'm, not, I'm I don't always directly just go like, hey, I gotta do a straight punt this weekend. But that's what it's looking like for me, uh, especially if I mean these contests are small. These contests are actually back to where they were and I think you can actually take I think you can take the eight contest down the eight dollar octane contest I don't think you can tie or I mean you, you can tie but I don't think I think you could win this contest without tying pretty easily actually because it's only 11,000 people you might not even have to get as crazy as I'm thinking I might be stuck in the whole COVID thing with too much chalk everywhere but these contests are tiny um most contests on DraftKings this week fill up with the amount of views that this video will get. So we might be dealing with a much smaller, more educated NASCAR uh, DFS player this weekend. Just because now, like I said, all the all the sports are back. We're getting ready for football. Everybody's like, football, got to move money over to football. You know, got to do my snake draft. Got to do my draft, you know. What is up with that? What? Never mind. Why are people doing draft? Why are people putting money on NFL drafts like in July? <laughs> Even now, like I don't do any NFL drafts until like the week of week one, like the week before week one. That's when I'm doing my NFL drafts. I don't do it like two months in advance. That's crazy, man. Wow, it's so crazy. Wow. Uh, let's look. I I don't have my people who are underpriced. Brandon Finger. Derek Cross, Raphael Lazard. Those three are completely underpriced. Even if you don't go a punt route, I think those guys are viable. Um, I, I mean, this is an open-ended. This is an open-ended week. I really like the pricing here. You can play whoever you want. Really, it's not going to be that difficult. And if you really avoid, if you if you use a punt, you really avoid stupid plays. You really avoid having to decide between Brendan Poole and Clay Greenfield and Jordan Anderson and Fogelman and Self Roper. You really avoid that. I mean, look, if you have, if I have to, if I look at it this way, because Self would probably be the, the the best safe punt that I would like if you're not going to drop down to the four Ks like I am. But Austin Wayne Self starting twenty seventh, six thousand uh, dollars. He finished fifth last year here. That was a fluke, too. That's going to draw ownership because people always look at recent history. So he did that because there was Rex at the end. Although I think he was like, I think Pierce City was 15th, top five, top 15 in race speed. 
Uh, but if you look at the races this year, he's been top 20. He's been inside the top 20 on race speed each each race of the last three. 18th at uh, Kansas, which he turned into a 13th place finish. 19th at the first Kansas, with he, which he turned into a 17th place finish. 17th, or 17th race rating at Texas, which he turned into a 14th place finish. Um, Austin Wayne Self has a 20th place call. But if you could, if you told me I could get a thousand dollar discount and go to Tyler Hill, you know, hey Tyler Hill, where has he been? Let's see. Uh, let's look at the races that he's ran this year. So, Homestead race rating twenty eighth, finished twenty fifth. Uh, Pocono race rating twenty fifth, finished nineteenth. Uh, Ken, that's Kentucky race rating at Kentucky thirty first, finished thirtieth. Kansas race rating twenty fifth, finished sixteenth. Dude, for the for the value that gives me, dude, give me some Tyler Hill, give me some Tim Beans, give me some Jennifer Jacob. I don't want to deal with the chalk around Austin Wayne Self. I don't want to deal with the chalk around Fogelman. I don't want to deal with the chalk around anybody else. I don't care if there's chalk in the punts either. They really can't hurt you. I don't know. I I think that's how you really have to approach it. Um, I think that's about it really this one was pretty easy i didn't really have to dive down into it too much uh, pretty straightforward and there's gonna be wrecks i mean you just have to pray that you don't have the guy who wrecks that's always what happens uh but that's about it really this is a pretty quick harmless easy easy video so uh let me start working on the road of road america road atlanta i don't know i gotta fix i gotta figure out where the race it <laughs> for the xfinity series i've been listening to too many podcasts today um, yeah, guys, see you on the next one.